Tesla's done it again. It's announced something and then backtracked things a little after the internet, or rather some of its fans, got a little butt hurt. But rather than a pricing change or a package fee, this was now a policy change to how some supercharger stations operate, namely the maximum state of charge that those stations will hit at sites when demand is high. The announcement made over the weekend was meant to help increase throughput at supercharger stations with high demand and long wait times. It worked by restricting the maximum state of charge that Tesla customers could recharge to. Less than three days later, however, Tesla offers customers a way to get rid of that same limit by sliding their charge limit line on their car's charging screen to the right, which effectively allowed them to completely bypass the limit of 80% state of charge. So all is good in Tesla supercharger world. Customers who don't need more than 80% get to move on when their car reaches that point, and those who really need or want 100% can get it. But it got me thinking, is this something every charging operator provider should be doing at rapid charging sites? I think it is, with a few exceptions, and I'm going to tell you why. To do that, I think it's worth looking at some of the psychology of rapid charging and filling up electric cars. Electric car battery packs are, by their very nature, not capable of holding anywhere near as much energy as a gasoline or diesel fuel tank. And we've got used to the idea, especially with older EVs with smaller battery packs, that they need to be fully charged at all times in order to give any meaningful range. Today, the range of newer electric vehicles isn't far off the range of some models of internal combustion engine cars on the market, however. While petrol or diesel cars tend to have more energy on board than your average EV, they only use a fraction of that stored energy for power because the rest is wasted. Nevertheless, even though modern EV ranges aren't super far off some internal combustion engine cars and they travel far longer than your bladder can hold, people are still stuck with the mindset that they need a full charge. In a world where 230 plus miles of range per charge and thus 190 to 200 miles for an 80 or 90% charge are becoming the norm, the need to be fully charged really isn't the need it once was. Unless, of course, you're doing a long distance road trip across country or the weather, the terrain or your driving style is preventing you from achieving the car's ideal rated range. But more on that in a bit. For now, let's talk about the whole restriction on a maximum charge. In Tesla's case, it restricted maximum charging at certain busy supercharger locations to 80%, either through a 24-hour maximum charge restriction or a rolling restriction during periods of high demand. But I've seen other charging providers do similar things, and some automakers even hard code a rapid charging restriction into their car's onboard battery management system to make it hard to rapid charge beyond 80 or 90%. The reasons for doing this? Well, there's the time thing, and then there's the battery protection thing. It can take as much time to charge from 80% to 100% as it does to charge from, say, 20% to 80%. The reason for this is pretty basic physics. I'm not going to go into the details here because I have done that on this channel in the past. But just think about a busy tube train during the rush hour with lots of people already on it. It's harder to get on and find a seat than it would be if that same tube was completely empty. Charging from 80 to 100% on a rapid charging station, supercharger or otherwise, is relatively slow. It causes queues as fellow drivers have to wait longer to charge and save for a few edge case scenarios. Your EV has a full battery range of less than 100 miles or you're going cross country between two charging stations at the very limit of your car's practical capabilities, then, well, you won't need it. So there's the general don't be a dick thing. It allows more electric cars to use existing charging stations per hour. And that, in turn, should help keep overheads lower for those installing and operating electric car charging stations. But there's also a practical thing of keeping your car's battery pack healthy. Shoving a high charging current into an almost full battery pack doesn't do your battery any favours when it comes to its overall health. 
rapid charging can be good for a battery pack, but when rapid charging is used when the car is almost full, well, that's not so good. Continually fast charging to 100% and eventually the battery will suffer, aging more quickly than it would if the car were not charged to 100% all the time. Unless, of course, the company making your car has provisioned a whole lot of extra hidden capacity that you don't use, but it makes it possible to rapid charge to full without any major issues. This, by the way, is what Audi says it's done with the Audi e-tron, but that's not been very popular with electric car fans because of the resulting lower range. My takeaway? Most of the time, charging to 100% on a rapid charging station really isn't needed. Charging to 80% in what I'd guess is 90% of all use case scenarios should be fine, unless you live miles away from any infrastructure. In which case, I'll grant, the occasional rapid charge beyond 80% is something that you might need. For my money, this feels like a storm in a teacup, especially since rapid charging to full isn't good for your car's battery pack. But what do you think? Let me know below. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or you didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode, and support us with Patreon, Ko-fi, or by grabbing some swag from our swag shop. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.